Good morning. Good morning. All right, that's uh, good energy. Um, <laughs> thanks for coming, <laughs> faculty, students, and uh, guests from other campuses, uh, staff. Uh, you know, this is uh, Tech Day 2016. Uh, the theme for Tech Day 2016 is information security. Uh, if you look at uh, many of the industry publications, information security is uh, a you know top IT issue for many institutions and for many companies. Um, so uh, our keynote speaker uh, for today is Mr. Amir Devirian, uh, Vice President for Information Technology, Chief Information Officer. He is also the Chief Information Security Officer. Please uh, join me in welcoming Amir to the uh, podium. Thank you. So, good morning. <laughs> so, I wanted to first thank you for all of you guys to be here. Everybody can hear me? All right. and, and this today is we want to talk about information security. So, uh, we're going to take about probably about 50 minutes to go through the keynote. We have some exercises for you, and we have some trivia. So pay attention to the whole presentation. And those of you who use your iPhone, Andy, uh, you could continue using it if you want. But be careful. Just want to give you a warning that, that, that you need to be careful when you use your iPhone in this room today. So, so I usually start with a, with a little bit of a desktop revolution, which I don't know how many of you guys have seen this or not, but it's really nice to see this. One of the reasons that I love this particular slide because, you know, I graduated from high school in 1981 from Troy High School. And this is, again, has been my evolution through technology through most of my adult life. So you could see that, that I guess I picked the right field because everything gets digital in, in last 20 some years. Let me start with talking about the definition of security. Okay, security, when we look at security as a definition in the Webster, we look at is as, as few definitions, a state of being protected or safe from harm, freedom from care, anxiety, or doubt, which most of us do with information, well-founded confidence. So security is really is a level of confidence. You're never going to have 100% security. You're never going to have zero security, no security. You always have a level of confidence. And information security, is designed to protect the confidentiality and integrity available to your computer system data. It's about data. It's for protecting your data. How confident you are to protect your data. So that's what information security. I wanted to show you uh, some figures as we go through this presentation. In the world, people, economy, there's a $450 billion loss to information security. 450 billion. To put that in perspective, that is an economy of Philippines. That's the 30th largest economy in the world. So we lose 450 million dollars in cyber crimes and security. And if you look at that, on an average, there are 154 dollars per record. And for healthcare, it could cost as long as 363 dollars in records. Security gone wild, in information security gone wild. That's what I call it. technology today. This is a 2015 and 16. It's really is a transition for security. 
there are three major indicators that really baffle the security professional. Okay? Number one, big data. Number one, big data. Those of you who don't know what big data is, we generate lots of data every day. It shows that in the last two years, we have generated enough data for entire human race, history of human race, last two years, okay? And that's going up in exponentially. So your data, your privacy, your information is gonna be all over the place in, in the future moving forward. The second thing I wanna talk about is mobility. Okay, I'll come back to those three in a second. Mobility is another one that has taken a big leap in information security. Now, the, if you look at it, it says 4.8 bill, 4 billion people globally have a smartphone, but that's not the data I'm really looking at. The data you want to look at, 73% of the people can't put their phone down. <laughs> okay? And, and if you look at it, people look at their phone in an average of 100, 150 to 200 times a day. Okay? Also, there are three hours they spend on their phone. Now, it's an average because they have Generation X, Generation Y, and the veterans. When you look at the, the, the net generation, you're looking at least maybe seven or eight hours sometimes. They're on, if you look at my son, you know, on a weekend, an average of eight to 10 hours on the smartphone, okay? The last thing is the cloud. When internet was invented, there was no cloud, right? It was just a big network. It was designed for very simple information security. Now, the cloud is everything. You cannot do anything without a cloud. What does a cloud mean? It means when you go on the internet and you type in a username and password someplace and you get onto an application, right, and you don't know what happened to it and suddenly magically something happened. You use the application. You're using a cloud. So right now, you cannot live without a cloud. How many of you guys, I mean, how many, you can't live without Google. Google is a cloud. So everything we do reside on cloud. It was much simpler with my security specialist like me because we had a server. You manage a server. You had a workstation. You manage a workstation. You, come, you look at to see where the people went from a workstation to a server. Right now, they go in some kind of a space called cloud. They don't know where they are. They don't know how the data transmitted. They don't know how his data is kept. How do you know how your bank is securing your data in there? And how do you know you're really going to your bank? You could have been gone to some place in Russia. And it looks like Bank of America. How do you know really going to your bank? So how do you deal with the data in transit? And how do you deal with data at rest in their institutions? When you give them your credit card information, how do you know that they're really scrubbing it and deleting that, that record? I guarantee you, 200%, they're keeping your credit card numbers. So your credit card numbers are replicated, not once, not twice, not three times, but I would say at least over a year, maybe 1,000 to 2,000 times. What are the big security trends of 2016? Number one, big data. Number two, mobility. Number three, cybercrime. Number four, a skill gap for information security officers. Now, I want to take you back. Those three indicators, those three indicators are really is going to revolutionize what we do in security in the future. Those three indicators got everybody scared. Mobility is a good example of that. Facebook knows where you are every day. Facebook knows what you do every day. Facebook knows who your friends are. Facebook knows what you do, what you touch, what you don't. And they take that data and they keep it. So 
the privacy is gone when we're looking at mobility. You think you protect everything from there, but AT&T has your data. How do you know AT&T keeping your data safe? You connect into a cell tower. Cell towers keep your data. So it is really the mobility, big data, and of course, the cybercrime. People are getting smarter and smarter every day. The way I look at security today, that the cybersecurity in professionals have no solution moving forward. So when you look at the revolution that we got from airline industry, remember the airline industry? Right before 9-11, after 9-11, right? So right now, these three kind of trends are really gonna change the way we do things. So there's a huge gap moving forward with information security. All right, let's get some, a couple more things. 2015, 38 more percent incident in 2015 than previous 2014. Now this is what I love most. An attacker is, sits 200 days dormant. So they actually go and plant something and wait until something happens. So you think you're safe, suddenly they attack and do things in there, okay? Of course, 70% of CICOs think the employees are stealing data for information from the company, sensitive information, okay? I want to talk about phishing. How many of you know what phishings are? Uh -huh. All right, great, that's fantastic. And it's not what you do. So I want to show you the little things that we created. This is Jeff, and when Jeff gets back to his desk, he's going to check his email. And when he does, he notices an email from the Dean at Cal State Fullerton. But the email was not from the Dean, it was from this guy, and he is a hacker. So when he clicks on the link for a meeting that he doesn't remember talking about, bad things happen. So just remember, be careful. One of the most important aspects of information security is us. We are the, the most, because what, what you do in real life is you look at security as physical security. Physical security is easy. You go in there, you have your house, you lock it, you put bars behind it, right? In virtual security, and, and you know you're in a good neighborhood, so you look at the housing prices, right? It's one of the things you look at. Look at the housing prices, the level of confidence is, you know, how, how the, the police come and looks at things and goes across. But in a virtual security or in information security, you are always in bad neighborhoods. And not that you don't are in a bad neighborhood, you have no idea that you are in a bad neighborhood. So you always have to have your, your, your guards up. Federal Trade Commission and other stats. Federal Trade Commission, do I scare you yet? All right, Federal Trade Commission publishes a top three crimes or complaints about users. In 2015, the top three focus was identity management, you notice that, identity theft, imposture scam, and debt collection. And if you noticed, identity theft was 490,000 identity theft in 2015 in the U.S. 490,000 identity theft over 16%. And I have to tell you, this, this number, you know debt collection actually went up. If you look at previous years, the debt, the identity theft was number one. Okay, all right, I'll have a trivia for you. All right, who wants to answer this trivia? How many personal records were exposed for a major organization in 2015? I have a gift, so the way I get you guys to answer, if you, if, you, if you do it, I'll give you a gift. Yes. I am very sorry for you. <laughs> Lisa. You are correct. You get a selfie stick. <laughs> 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 
there was 169 million record was exposed in it here. Social media, again, another thing. There are, if you look, look at you, Facebook, of course, is always up there. But, but I really don't put out Facebook because I think that Facebook is for old people. Because average age is 40. I always say it. So if you are using Facebook, you're old. That's how it works. Okay? So if you do, don't, don't claim it. Just say, I use Instagram. In, immediately you come down, you know, another 16 years. So you go from 40 to 24, okay? Even though if you don't use Instagram, just claim you do Instagram. All right, so there are 300 million people, Instagrammers, 75 million photos and views. What I want to show you is that in Snapchat, there's 100 million Snapchat. Almost every one of your kids uses Snapchat. Or, and there are 6 billion videos we use per day on Snapchat. So you talk about big data, right? Social media. I want to show you, we were going to do this in here with you guys, but decided not to do it because I thought maybe the police will come and ask after me. So we'll show the video instead. <laughs> so, so again, this is something we could have done very easily to any of you outside. So again, be careful when you're using your social media. You are putting your personality, your information, everything about you in there. And, if, and, and also your age. If you want to know about your age, you go to the, a site called www.ussearch.com. You put your name, first name, last name, and approximately your, your area and age, and figure out your age. So if you get a chance, give it a try. Ussearch.com, I'll give you some things. All right. This is a CNBC talked about uh, in 2016, this cybersecurity. You're seeing about a half a million tech in attempts happening in the cyberspace. Half a million. Okay? Every minute. Half a million. I'll give you some numbers. Okay? The biggest issues are four different types of viruses and worms. So number one, what's coming is, we call it headless device. A lot of things when you're looking at headless devices are, you know, they're trying to attack your watches. They're trying to attack your smartwatches, smartphones, medical devices, and all that stuff. So you don't think, you go buy a watch from Apple, which I strongly recommend you do, uh, <laughs> but, but those viruses are designed to do that. You got jailbreak in the cloud. People are attacking the cloud to try to get the information from you. Ghostware, blastware, there are, there are areas that they will go and sit that you never know. So they'll sit just like dormant and suddenly grab your information and give it out. And of course, Blastware, it will sit there, disabled, which is really, I love this one. It sits disabled, do nothing, okay? Gets the information, does what it needs. The minute you detect it, it blows up the computer. It's called Blastware. The last one, what I like, is a two-faced malware. That's what's coming. The two-faced malware is most of the people, most of the developers, what they do is they take their code and they test it in a sandbox. And after they're testing it, they will put it on production. The two-faced malware is able to disguise in a sandbox and attack in production. So in the testing process, it is sitting without moving out, and then suddenly attacking the security protocol. This is what I wanted to talk to you about, is in 2020, these are a top 20 vulnerabilities, okay? When you're looking at systems, information systems, there's almost a, a set of vulnerabilities, or security holes, if you want to call it, vulnerability or security holes, are born every day, okay? There was 411 of them for Mac operating system in 2015, okay? iOS, 384. When, when he comes and, you know, comes and says, upgrade your phone, and he thinks, what is Apple doing, right? He's really trying to push the patches into you because they want you to be safe, okay? But I want you to show you something. 
in number 21. How many use Acrobat? How many guys view Adobe? How many guys patch your Acrobat? Two, three? If you haven't done it since 2015, you're vulnerable. It means they can use Adobe Acrobat to attack your computer. You can see some of those in there. Safari is there, Google Androids are there. These are just in 2016. This is just in 2016. You can see Firefox is number one on the list. You got Android, Google Android is another one's on the list. Moving forward, give you a little bit of more stats. The last one, I want to look at the bottom of this in mobile devices. 17 percent. How many of you guys have Androids? Raise your hand. God help you. <laughs> May God be with you. OK? 17 percent of application Androids have viruses in it. 17 percent. 17 percent. Actually, iPhone, as a security officer, iPhone is actually the safest device you can have on a mobile phone because Apple goes through extensive security checking when install an app on their computer, on the, on the devices. Okay? Look at the numbers. New vulnerabilities, 168. Look at the malwares, 277. So they are moving into the areas. Web threats, they're looking SSL. You know what SSLs are? Secure socket layer. When you go to your bank, you use a secure socket layer. 2000, these are 2015, 2016. There are many SSL weaknesses. So when you're using your browser, you think you're secure when the lock comes on, good luck. It is not. Okay? This is the one I love. You guys get a spam. There are 28 billion spams per day per day, okay? Looks like I got, okay. Did I give away this one? All right. All right. Well, whoever says this first. Chrome Active used to collect information by sending a message to mobile phone is known as? Somebody have to raise your hand. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. You want a, the second selfie stick? All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Here's again, zero day vulnerabilities. What it means is zero day vulnerabilities when the vendor suddenly detects, oh my God, I'm being hacked on my application. Windows, anything. That's called zero day because they didn't have time to figure this out. It's a zero day vulnerabilities. Look at the time it takes usually to patch it. In in 2013, it wasn't much, but in 2014, almost 59 days. That means they have 59 as hackers, because when a vendor noticed it, so does the hackers. There are 59 days. Now, for you guys, you guys haven't patched your acrobats in 2015. Might as well be like, you know, two years before you patch your 2015 issues. So, so again, 59 days. Okay. We want to do an exercise. Are you guys ready? How many of you guys go to Starbucks? Okay, I want you to pick up your iPhone. Pick up your iPhone. Look, look at your iPhone and see where you're connected to. Open your iPhone, see where you're connected to. What access point you're connected to? Okay, how many of you guys connect to Google or Starbucks? Okay? You see that? <laughs> if you use Edge Roam, some of you guys already connected to Google Starbucks. If not, you can connect to Google Starbucks. Why don't you connect to Google Starbucks? You should see Google Starbucks here. You see Google Starbucks? You see Google Starbucks here? Are you in a Starbucks? Very good. <laughs> so we want to connect to Google Starbucks. All right? You connected to Google Starbucks? How many guys got? You can take your phone, connect to Google Starbucks. You connected to it? Are you sure? All right. 
All right. We have a hacker in the room. <laughs> we have a hacker in the room, and we ask them to look at the Google Starbucks. So I'm going to do this. So right now, the hacker is sitting, uh, sitting, and you can do anything you want. Let me switch this so you can get it. So the, so the hacker is sitting, and so I can go anywhere, right? So what I want the hacker to do is simulate. So right now, nobody knows anything. The hacker actually sitting here in here. So if you use Google Starbucks, you haven't even noticed you've gone to it. You can go to any site you want. You're already in there, OK? Now I want the hacker to turn on to make it look like exactly how the Google Starbucks is. You know how you go to Google Starbucks? You get the accept conditions? All right, let's do that. So I want you to connect to Google Starbucks. So you notice I'm going to do this. So I have Google Starbucks. Should be here. Connect to Google Starbucks. Dropped off. All right, let's see if the hacker is doing it right. Hacker is, all right, it's coming. The hacker is setting it up. OK? So if I go to here, see if it does. See, the hacker will. Connect up. We want to simulate exactly what you're looking at Google Starbucks. So coming, all of you guys, how many of you guys seen it? Yep, you see the access point? So let me get. I should have done it before you guys. Everybody do it. Everybody gets accepted term and conditions? Huh? You got it? Let me connect up again because it takes 30 seconds to switch it. All right. So do we got it? Connect up? Mine might be a little bit further up, but show you. Okay. What we want you to do, what I want you to do, if you go out to a Starbucks, we have a little site for you. Actually, we have a sweepstake for you. Let me see if we can do this. Let me see. Well, while it's going on, I'm going to do something else to show you. There's another hack I want to show you, OK? How many of you guys have PCs at home while it's going on? So your brother Christian, you... Mm -mm. Sorry, guys. I'm going to get this out of here so I could. OK. So if you go on PC, I want to show you a small hack that you could do on your own and trick your significant others. <laughs> so, so what I do is I will go to this directory. See this? Computer. Local disk, Windows, System32, you may want to write this down, Drivers ETC. I'm going to open up a file, call hosts. I am going to say, if you go to Amazon or Yahoo, I want you to go to my site. Save it. Everybody see this? I'm going to go to here. I'm going to type in www.yahoo.com. I can cast off that.
What did I do? There's a file in everybody's computer called host file. Whenever you put a, U, a site name and an IP, which is internet protocol address, connected to it, it will look at that before going anywhere else again. By changing that, I redirect you to this page. So you think you're going to Yahoo. Now, I could be an attacker. I could take over your computer. I can take over your computer change your host file, simulate Yahoo, you have no idea you got to my site except Yahoo site. And have this sitting in your computer. So, how many of you guys got this? Is, is Starbucks working? All right, I want you to go in here and type in username and password because we have a soup steaks for you. All right, oh, why don't you switch? So those of you, here's what you got. Make sure this part's, right? This is what you get, right? Those of you, how many of you guys trying this out? All right, if you do that, you say accept term and condition. Door's done. And I want you to do your soup steak. So let's type in my password and login. Can you spell it? You're just, I think I'm just going to use my fictitious one because you never know. <laughs> How many of you guys got this already? Raise your hand. <laughs> so easily what we're doing is what we're calling it hacker in the middle. So what we're doing with this is you can sit as a hacker in the middle. I'm switching this to show you. I'll talk about hacker in the middle, then I'll tell. So we're doing it hacker in the middle that sits in there and between you and internet. Anything you type in, this person can see. Those of you on Google, we can ask the hacker to write now to block Google.com. We could do that. And we can sniff everything you have. Anybody connect to Starbucks, we got everything you got. Every single thing you have done can be reviewed by us. By the way, you don't have to change your passwords. Those of you who use your real passwords, I know you're not, those of you got the hacking, I know Mike admitted that he did it, but I think some of you guys got it but didn't admit it that you did. Mike, did you put your username and passwords in? <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a hacker that we'll, we'll, we'll tell you in a second in here. Okay. I want to talk about some of the advices we have for you. Okay. We want you to be proactive, not reactive. We want you to protect the data. We want to have no single point of failure. Why didn't want you want a single point of failure? What does Darth Vader want you to have a single point of failure? Because if your data is lost, it's lost, right? You want to make sure there's multiple single. Uh, uh, and and also we want to encrypt, 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 and multi-factor authentication. The way to look at it, to encrypt, 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 and multi-factor authentication. All right. Let's talk about passwords. Oh, it's called EDUCAUSE. I mean. This year, in the past several years, let's talk about education in a second. In the past several years, information security was always trying to get to the top. But this is the year that got to the top. It's always been back and forth with EDUCAUSE. Funding IT was one of the top ones all the time because it's hard to get money to get funding IT. But information security, I think for next few years, is going to be a top of EDUCAUSE for all educational institutions. I don't know if you read it on the papers or not. Recently, there was an article published that's saying that the hackers are really focusing on two industries, education and medical. 
So information and the threats are huge, and you want to develop the policies for it. Here's the three top issues in Information Security 2016. Number one, training. We have made information security in campus mandatory. Chance Office made it mandatory for us. We are having a hard time to getting people to take it. Taking 20 minutes is more valuable than and really understanding some of the key points of protecting yourself than anything else. The other thing, we need to elevate information security to the highest level in the institutions, which what I do with the president, I'll bring it up to the president. And the last one, we're looking at next generation of security devices, because what we have now doesn't work. You, you get home and you think you have wire scanners. Today, wire scanners cannot catch all the malware. So it is, when you go to Best Buy's and they sell you those wire scanners, majority of them does not catch all of them. They catch some, but they don't catch all anymore. In our campus, we have multiple layers of information security organization. I'm the chief information security officer. We have Kerry Boyer, our campus information security officer. We have techno security coordinator that looks at it. We have a training coordinator that looks at training, and we have network scanning support. We are scanning the network all the time. And we have done a lot to protect the campus network. And this, still we are getting caught by the hackers. Number one issue with password is the password. You are the most enemy of yourself with the passwords. The most common password is password one, two, three. Okay, I have the list of them. Top 10 bad worst passwords. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. How many of you, you don't have to admit it, I know who you are, that actually use one, two, three, four, five, six for your code? You don't have to admit it. All right. How many of you use like football or baseball? Use those, okay? So all of these can be cracked within seconds by the hackers. Seconds by the hackers, okay? This is my favorite ones is, I don't know if you've seen this or not, this is a, show you this. Lately, largely because of what happened to Sony, companies and individuals are more concerned about the safety and privacy of their information than ever. President Obama, has unveiled a number of new proposals this week to crack down on hackers, and he plans to address this in the State of the Union speech on Tuesday. And it's great that the government is working on this, but the truth of the matter is we need to do a better job of protecting ourselves. You know, the most popular password in the United States is password123. And as long as we're, as long as that's the case, we're vulnerable. So today we sent a camera out on the Hollywood Boulevard to help people by asking them to tell us their password. And... <laughs> This is how that went. We're talking about cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> It's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. But, Has you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. What year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. So Jolie, 6, 12, 9. 95. Yes. Got it. So you mean to give my password right now? No, I cannot do that. But we all want to know what it is so we can tell you if it's strong or not. Oh, my goodness. Um, um, let me think. OK, one is Tel Aviv. Yeah. Four, six, eight. And then Israel. It's, it's only three, but it's, you know, it's, uh, for me, it's strong enough. Ireland. One, two, three, four. Gemma. One, two, three. Spell G-E-M-M-A. <laughs> Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, like so what? like. Like, what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name. What's your uh, grandma's name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So Maria is your password? Oh, yeah, now you know my password. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the important thing is he le they learned it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love Jimmy Kimmel. And it's, 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 it's really true. How many of you guys give out your password? You go out and, you know, it, it's, you know, a lot of times, you know, your Wi-Fi passwords are similar to other passwords. One of the things I want to talk about passwords is a lot of us use common passwords and use the same passwords in other places. Now it means that if they break into other place, you're vulnerable to all other systems you have, and you have no idea. So it is key to keep your identity very, very secure and safe for every place you go, and you use a different one. Also, they are really smart, because they say, okay, if you use the son's name and figure out this one, we're gonna just try a combination of the son's names around it. And suddenly, if you have one basic core password, that can be cracked up very easily by others. Identity management, one of the things we have done on the campus is we are been using what we have is using in commons for identity management on the campus. Most of you, when you go to lynda.com, you see lynda.com uses the same credentials you have. When you go to Dropbox, it uses the same credentials you have. So one of the things we did on this campus, we want to reduce the number of passwords and username you have, so we create encrypted connection with the vendor. So when you're using, when they come and connect you to the campus, or when I connect it to your system, they actually come and ask us, and we will authenticate you. They don't have your password. They don't have your username. We have your password and username. We're the one that controls it and makes sure it's safe and secure. So you, the vendor, we are not vulnerable on the vendor. So one of the things we're moving for is for identity management and a federation. And when, when, when a chancellor's office lost those 8,000, you know, when, when they had the Title IX training that it was on a paper, well, if they would have used identity management, they would not have that issue because then we were not vulnerable in their system. Their vulnerability is as, as good as their system vulnerabilities, so and, as their level of security and confidence. This is just the way that we do it, so we basically go through the flow of identity flow to get them in there. How do we protect you against attacks? What do we do when you come to the campus? You have what we have routers. So when we come from internet, we have a router connections. And then we do at multiple ways. So we have firewalls, we have routers, we have intrusion protection devices, we have protocol monitors, and every single thing that we do, we protect the campus in different ways. We use the concept of segmentation in this campus. So when you come, we're actually gonna segment where the traffic is. So the student traffic is different than the faculty traffic and the staff traffic. The network, when you're looking at secure and a database network is different. And each of these segments are protected individually differently. So we actually spend a lot of time and effort and a lot of cost in order to segment our network in such a way that we protect us. Because once they get to one segment and they will be able to actually exploit other things in that segment. So we are, I will show you this, but this is all sort of different ways of be protecting you on the campus for this. We also look at data, data security classification. We want you to always understand what is your classification or data. On our campus, we protect the level one, like our first one. Level two, little bit less, and level three, of course, is public. What I want you to think about always is what is your data classification on your data? And the data is that it can be exposed, like social security number, credit card number, username and password, where they combine with SSN are called level one data. They are there to get financial gain from you. Remember that $450 billion are because of gaining financial gain from you. The gray, data, birth, address, and gender are not. Almost everybody's address is exposed. You go on a web, type in your address, your even your driver license is exposed, most people. So on a public web. Okay. Give you another trivia. All right. Let's see how many of you guys can do this. How many intrusion attempts has CSU has since July 2004? What is it? Nice try. <laughs> Susan. Yes. All right. So we give you a one terabyte drive. Make sure you put all your stuff in this and secure it with yourself.
Great job. So if you look at it, I'm just looking at one year. There are 61 million intrusions in 2013 and 14. And if you look at what we have here, 492 almost in two years. You see how the numbers has gone up? Okay, so 61. And you look at this, this is what I like to show you, a trend of the campaign intrusion attempts. You could see people actually take breaks in December and January. January, you know, they, the hackers also want times off. So that's what, so they actually do spend some time with their families in December and January. Uh, you know, they have more time in April and May and June and so forth. Okay, here's, the, here's the, the number one, as you can see here, number one attacks are Trojan. Trojan is like phishing attacks. When you go, they come in and you, they exploit you for them, just like I showed you before. Okay, I have another one. All right, let's see. I have another one terabyte hard drive. Okay, what person of email coming to the campus are considered clean? Joe, you are correct. All right, all right, Joe. <laughs> all right, yes, it is true. We actually get 11% of our campus is only clean coming to the campus. And here's the one, we get it stopped by, by and detected via stock. Okay, campus network traffic. I want to show you this because most of our campus network traffic, this is 2014 and 15. Number one is what? Anybody can see it back there? Those are with good eyes. Number one traffic is a streaming video. Number two is, of course, SSL. They do SSL. Number three is Netflix. So those of you, number three campus traffic is Netflix. Okay? Number four is HTTP. Dropbox is down to seven. iTunes is up to number nine. And Instagram is down here. So Instagram is in the bottom right here. So Instagram traffic. So it gives you a, a traffic. Okay, Dropbox usage. Just want to show you how the Dropbox number of terabytes that uploads and downloads in 2015 and 16. So we do a lot of things to Dropbox, all secure on the first three quarters. Okay. All right. So I want to wrap up with my helpful information security hints of 2016. I love Game of Thrones. I don't know if you guys, how many of you guys like Game of Thrones? Raise your hand. <laughs> it's HBO. <laughs> All right, let me talk about these things because it's really important. What I want you to take away is these six helpful hints from this. Number one, protect your passwords. Do not use common passwords. Number three, I want you to classify your information. I want you to go home and classify your information. Classify your data. Know where your data is in your house. When your tax consultant tells you, please email me your tax forms or your W-2, what do you say? No. Hell no. Okay? So classify your level one data. It's very, very critical. Okay? Number two. Do not click on any links. Remember, there's only 11% of links come to you are clean. Now they have a spear phishing. Spear phishing is a phishing that gone wild. They're actually going to look at you personally and say, okay, I'm gonna send, I know, it's very simple to figure out who you are. You look at ussearch.com. If you had a chance, go look at it. Public, okay? You look at it, it tells you who's your spouse are, who's your everything about you. So all I need to do is send an email from your spouse and says, honey, you know, could you do me a favor, go to the bank and do this transfer, I'm stuck, or do something, or, you know, log into this website and buy this, because I know everything about you. So once they know, just like you saw the little, little privacy video, once they know who you are, they can actually target you personally, know who you are, and go to your loved one and send a message from the loved one to you and then get you to move forward, to get them in a financial, financial. You digital shredding, 
and unremove unwanted information. If you delete something in your hard drive, all it does is marks it to you. It does not get rid of it. Okay? You need to be able to get rid of the file. There are tools and utilities you can actually digitally shred something you don't want that puts zeros and ones or zeros on those locations on a hard drive, okay? And protect your home network. The most vulnerable place you are is your home network. The most vulnerable you are home network. How do I do this? I created Starbucks. We just created a hacker here created Google Starbucks, right? Just in front of you. We created Google Starbucks. We can actually, there are exploits. Those of you who think you have a password at your home, those can be broken in two hours. Your most sophisticated passwords on your Wi-Fi can be broken in two hours. So when you think that you have a password and there's a lock there, don't be safe. Protect your home network. And then the last one, which is a really key, is monitor your information protocol, profile. Monitor your information profile. That means you have to know there are ways you can monitor your information profile. How many of you guys go and search for yourself on Google every day or every month? Fantastic. How many of you guys click on the links? Okay. Great. That's fantastic. That is really good. Also, do what I recommend, credit monitoring. A lot of you look at credit monitoring. The minute something happened. When you're looking at your bank account, there are monitoring on your bank accounts you can do. When somebody uses your credit card, there's an email or a text sent to you, right? Or same, when you get to a certain level, use every monitoring that's available to you for free. Because the hackers, the minute you see something out of ordinary, you can always stop it. You can always go in and stop it. The problem is average users don't pay attention until it's too late. So be monitor your network, protect your home network, and protect your username and password. So when we tell you change your password, we really mean it. It means well. I know you guys just pick, put a one at the end of it. We understand or put a two at the end of it, or you keep incrementing until 24, then you go back to one again. If you know all the tricks in the game, but try to be as protective to yourself as possible. Thank you very much. It was great seeing you guys. Thank you. <laughs> one more thing. I want our hacker to stand up over there in the corner. So <laughs> <laughs> give him a hand, because he set up the Google and Starbucks for you guys. I will take any questions if they have any have. Yes. Hi, my name is Peggy Luna. I'm with uh, the School of Nursing, and you talk about protect your home network. Do we have the software? Is that the software to purchase our home network available to staff and faculty? Um, or is there something else we should do? I, I will answer that. <clears throat> First of all, protecting your home network, it starts with what kind of device you buy for your Wi-Fi and everything, and then what you put, what kind of a filter. You, there's a whole set of things you can do for like, your network. One of the things we want to do in IT, actually create a package that give the users to take home. What are the do's and don'ts at home? So we're looking at actually protect. So hang on to that. We'll come back and send some to the campus probably next month or so and give you some kind of a prescriptive way of actually protecting your home network. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, since you asked a question, I'll give you a gift. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, Hi. Sue Fisher, I have two questions. Sure. So two gifts? No, you get one. <laughs> Just checking. You, you get one, Sue. Uh, my question is, when we put things into Dropbox, what is the level of security of the things that we put there, and do we need to encrypt them then if it's something that we're really worried about? Yeah. Dropbox is, we went through extensive, we went through extensive review of Dropbox, okay? When you transfer a, a packet from here to Dropbox, when it puts it in a cloud, it actually breaks it up 
into a, a small chunk of four Ks and encrypts each of them on transit. So it does not even send the whole file. It chops them up and sends it. Add there is also encrypted with one of the highest encryption. So your data is actually safe in there. What is the issue is when you have it on your PC. Because remember, you have it on your PC. So we're trying to protect you there. So your most vulnerability is when your data is sitting at your computer, not at the Dropbox. So that's why you have to protect your network. That's why we're trying to protect your PCs. That's why we're looking at all of those things. We're also looking at one of the things we want to do is it's important that you don't have level one in any of these clouds or not even your computer. So what I recommend, we are looking at uh, reviewing, doing a scanning for level one data. Just not to look at the data, but to see if the level data exists so we can let people know and be able to encrypt it. So we can actually encrypt it in the, in the Dropbox, even in a higher level than what we have. So Dropbox is very, very secure to use it in their cloud. Yes. Hi, Gail Brooks. Okay, so I love the single sign-on at work, but at home I probably have a hundred different sites where I have a username and password. How do you keep track of those and how do you ensure that they're safe? First of all, my, my recommendation, that's my recommendation, uh, or Darth Vader's recommendation is, to create a different password for each of those sites. I know most of them use actually your email account. So your username is not really protected, <laughs> most of them, because they use email as the protector, okay? So it is important to use a different type of password. What I recommend is having a scheme of passwords that you could really easily to look at, and I would say classify your passwords. The way I look at it, low-level classification, high level classification of password. So what I do, what I use for my bank is a high quality, strong password. What I use in Instagram, very low quality passwords. So you gotta look at to see how you can classify your password and look at them. One of the things that, that you wanna do is, is your, you create a, a lot of people you create a password file that is encrypted and it sits someplace that you have access to. So you could create those three or four levels of passwords or even longer passwords and then keep them into an encrypted file that you only have you can access to. Yes, oh, I gotta give, yes. So That's going, why. Oh. All right, okay. All right, this is for Gail. You could help out with the gifts. Yes, 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 either way. What, what is, anybody, any other uh, Yeah, I have a question. I got the mic, I'm already here. Okay, Ooh. all right, all right, all right, Pat. All right. <laughs> Going back to the Dropbox question. Mm -hmm. So, do you recommend us not keeping anything on our no, computer? No, no, I do not recommend oh. keeping anything on a computer. What I recommend is you can save everything in Dropbox very easily, drag them on the lump sync. When you don't need that file, you can always do selective sync. So when you do selective sync, it keeps it on the cloud, which is safe, but it doesn't keep it on your PC. Okay. And then one other question, sort of related to sure. that. So before we had the you know, university-wide Dropbox, we would use local servers. So mm -hmm. is it better for us to share our files, continue sharing them on the server? Because I know we still I, have a bunch of I, old stuff there, or should everything now be put in Dropbox? I would say the Dropbox is actually more secure than your local servers. Okay. And also, it's available to anywhere, any place, and, and it, has backups and everything else. And it's much easier to give people Absolutely. access to it Absolutely. as well. Okay. And it's Thank designed you. for that, and that's what they do every day. That's why we purchased that, because we can actually put it in some place that we can be safe. Uh, Dropbox is one of the, a lot of these cloud storage, they do not actually uh, Signed it, the term and condition that CSU does in information security, Dropbox actually signed it and agreed to it. So if they get any breaches, they pay for it. If they go in on, they pay for our damages. So there's a lot of things riding on it. That's why they spend a lot of money on the, on the security. Yes, sure. I did not say that. <laughs> if, if you go back and review the tape they're looking at, if you back up the tape, I said, I do not recommend level one data in a cloud, okay? I said, do not, I don't think you should keep level one data anywhere, not even in your PCs. 
because it's not just safe on a cloud, it's not even safe on your PC. We are not able to manage that because you take that PC, you could take your laptop anywhere and you'd be vulnerable as, as, as a place that you go to. So level one data, I do recommend even keeping level day one data in anywhere, keeping it safe where it needs to be safe, and then keep level two and three in anywhere you want, Dropbox or you want. All right, we have more gifts, so. I do not, I do not, uh, people say, what do you think about Google Drive? My recommendation is we have not done an extensive, Google is not, you have a certain level of security, but he has not agreed to a level of security that Dropbox has. So, so is it secure? Yes, but is it to a level of security that we be confident for? We haven't got that far yet. So they do have a lot of, Microsoft, Google, they do a level of security in all of these things too, but you have to be, still be careful because of the way Dropbox does it, it's very intensive and we actually, they opened up their doors for our ISO to review everything they've done in security which Google has not. They have just what, the, what they have on their website. Yes? In terms of protecting our identity, what are your thoughts on LinkedIn? I, my, again, I think privacy is something in the past. I think we lost our privacy when internet started. <laughs> I think it's, it's important that you know what you're exposing about yourself. LinkedIn is a very powerful network that use very well in professionals. You know, be able to share information. But all I'm telling you, don't put your cell phone there, right? <laughs> don't put anything you don't want everybody in the world to see. So otherwise, it's fine. That's what it's fine. Yes? Back to passwords. Um, what do you think about programs like KeePass? Uh, again, the programs that keep track of the passwords, I do not, like them very well because first of all, if you lose that password, you really lose all your passwords, okay? The other thing is, you know, we don't know, you don't know about how level of security, unless somebody audit them, you'll still be vulnerable with them. So you have, to, you have to take your time and make sure each of them being audited and make sure they manage right because again, when he says 74% of people can, in their company, if they know the encryption passwords, they could actually look into your password. They say it's encrypted, but that is, is it really truly encrypted? Yes. Uh, credit. It is a credit. Uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, credit monitor you're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it, credit monitors are fine. I, I will tell them monitoring is always great. You can do any kind of credit monitoring you want. It is safe to use it as long as you use one of the credible companies. All right, let's give a warm, uh, you know, round of applause to Amir. Thank you. All right, yeah. thanks, Amir. Yeah. Um, so you have a program, um, you know, we, we distribute the programs, so there are breakout sessions, more important information security topics. Uh, there are vendors who um, are presenting. Go challenge them. You know, what's your security plan? <laughs> um, if you have more questions for Amir, please uh, step here. Thank you, email. guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Email questions.